I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to Campfire Talk. This is where we sit around the campfire, put our feet up, have a cold drink, and let the conversation flow. We have Adam and Milo joining us today. You know, Milo, you were out for a while because of your cataracts. You know, Milo's on top of his game again and, you know, feeling <laughs> feeling pretty spry. And <laughs> uh, and people ask about uh, the Mr. Black piece that's still being read. So I'm not sure when Jeff is going to have the first piece completed. I sent him quite a bit of information. So, And he's also working on his Ph.D., so... He's pretty heavily involved in that, and I told him that takes priority, So, but he is working on uh, the transcript that I sent him. I keep getting people asking about Chris in Tennessee. I've asked Chris to come on the show. He said he will, but he's had some health issues also, had some heart problems. Uh, so as soon as he's ready to come on, Chris will come back on. And then lastly, I wanted to mention... Uh, there was there was something, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to say this gingerly. <laughs> there was something that Forrest has talked about for more than a year. And that's, you know, Sasquatches having glute muscles. You know, has a bit, they have a big butt. And we teased her about that. And, you know, it's it's been, it's come up in our conversations a few times, actually, over the past year plus. <clears throat> and uh, I've never heard anyone else talk about this. And I saw a post by someone fairly prominent in the Bigfoot community on Facebook who decided to talk about that, um, you know, and, and if anyone were to look at that, they would say, oh, it came from him. And it would have been nice had he, you know, mentioned under that, you know, a colleague, a fellow anthropologist, you know, brought this up. And, you know, gave Forrest credit for that. Forrest deserves a credit for it because you're the one that brought this up. Um, so that's kind of the end of my, my beginning rants. So, Forrest, I know you had a topic, and I think it was part of one of the other shows that you wanted to, to bring up. Yes, uh, and I will say this, that, you know, I am proud to know that my colleague recognized this. Um, so that's all I have to say about it. I'm proud that he, he made notation of that, of that Bigfoot has a big butt. <laughs> so <laughs> I know my, I can see Milo's wheels turning. Milo, I know you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, anyway. Come on, Milo. <laughs> Out with it. <laughs> we, uh, moving right along. A big uh, what we were talking huh? about before. Uh, was and then Milo can slip his stuff in here. Let me get this out, and then, and then Milo, you just go for it, honey. Um, I, I will say this: that we we were talking about, you know, Bigfoot having uh, these beards and such, and I had made the comment that uh, you you can look at some primates, and uh, the males will have uh, they seem to exhibit this little scruffiness on the face that you don't see on the female's face. So that, that, I think, is a, a sexual, <clears throat> sexual uh, morphology on, in the part, on the part of apes, primates, per, uh, period. But man has a chin. There are no other primates that have chins, which is why we have uh, um, less facial prognathism than you see in the other apes. And uh, we certainly don't have the, the dental um, formations like the canines and such i mean granted we have canines but they certainly don't look uh anything like uh um what you would see Good in job. an ape or even monkeys yeah. or unless of course the david Bowie. but uh, you know even uh, we have dentists nowadays to correct those things so anyway uh, <laughs> david Bowie was the only man and i love don't get me wrong i love david Bowie. trust me when i was younger i he he was i idolized him especially those beautiful eyes that were two different colors. But anyway, he did have a set of canines on him. 
So uh, there are people that do have more pronounced canines, but uh, uh, not anything like what you see in uh, other primates. So there you go. I throw it in your lap, uh, Milo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a pun, or was it a Sedgwick? My lap. <laughs> mm. that big butt. Putting, putting yeah. Bigfoot's big butt in Milo's lap. <laughs> is that what I, I is, knew he, I I'm, knew he, he wanted to say something about big butts. I, you know, I'm always saying, uh, you know, you heard that song, Baby's Got Back. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that, you know, they could say Bigfoot's Got Back because they do. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, that is what uh, that beautiful, those beautiful glutes that uh, people have are what make, helps us make us stand upright and walk the way that we do and run the way that we do. And that is exactly why Bigfoot uh, walks upright and uh, is bipedal, I think, is because of those big, beautiful glutes that they have. <clears throat> and it seems that us women are the only ones that notice that. I mean, what is that? <laughs> That's amazing. I, yeah. I, I, I think we stare away from that kind of stuff. You know, I was like, okay, <laughs> he's got a bigger butt than I got. I'm jealous or something. <laughs> You know, at least you know. At least I could braid my hair on my butt. You, you know, having stood in front of a Sasquatch, I don't. The, looking at its butt would have been the very last thing on my mind. Very good. Yes, my mind too. That is not happening. I am not looking. I'd be yeah. too busy looking down the trail, finding a place to run. Scared. <laughs> Well, y'all laughed at me when I was telling y'all about my story about the air conditioner uh, situation. And the first thing, I mean, yes, I noticed that he had uh, a, a wide uh, shoulders. But, I mean, I was like looking at his butt. I just kept thinking, my God, he's got a huge butt. And you guys were just <laughs> laughing at me when I was saying that. But, hey, remember when Anita was giving her description of the one that crossed the road right in front of her? And what was she saying? My God, he had a big butt, you know? And I'm like, so when you say big butt, you mean muscular, right? Yes, muscular, yes. Not big. Yeah. big. There's a difference between you know, a muscular butt and a big butt. I have a big, hairy butt, but I can braid my hair. You know what? This, this whole conversation is TMI. <laughs> good, good point, Chuck. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I'm just saying. Oh, heaven. Well, if it wasn't for those big glute muscles back there, I'm here to tell you there would, you know, you don't see that in any other primates. They just don't have it. I mean, their their behinds just drop off. They just don't have a butt. So, <clears throat> and that's why they're quadrupedal and not bipedal. There's no way to top that. Nope. <laughs> don't wanna. <laughs> I know. Hey, I know. Oh, I, do I want to jump right in there? <laughs> I attempted it with my my braiding, but hey, at least hey. we we didn't go down to the braiding <laughs> subject. We'll stay away from that one. That's that's way too much <laughs> off track. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even going to mention that on this this episode. <laughs> going to get unwanted attention in that subject. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's a horse of a different color. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad adam that's bad <laughs> okay well what else does anyone have to bring up i mean adam you and milo haven't been on for a while no we haven't i mean i've just been trying to put this dock into into shape um i i had a version one this was uh of the events from uh uh, last year in June and, um, June 24th, uh, through that week. And, um, uh, we found just a ton of evidence out there. And so I, I put together a doc that kind of showcased that. And then I gave it to, uh, uh, a, uh, just an extraordinary editor, uh, for, for critique. Um, his name's Kevin Filippini. And, um, uh, Kevin had done a, uh, a ten-year documentary on the uh, the grief process that was that had surrounded uh, the uh, September 11th uh, terrorist attack on the Twin Towers, and um, it was it took ten years to do this documentary. It was this amazing, enormous, epic thing, 
and uh, and, he, and he's done some other amazing work since then. Anyway, so I, the point being, I value his opinion, and um, he was just basically saying, "Hey, everything's working. This is really solid, but we need to know more about this Will Jevning guy." Because very much, I just hit the ground running with, okay, day one, you know, we all go out, Will sees these things, I'm documenting it, and he goes, we need background on Will, we need to know who this guy is. And I was, oh my gosh, so, and you know, Will, I had, the first thing I had done for you back in 2017 was sort of a step-by-step of how things were starting, you know, how your career started, your first encounter, and things like that, and so uh, I had that piece and then i brought it over and just dropped it at the head of the documentary and and uh, actually just created chaos and destruction so <laughs> i i have to just you know i it, it was a frankenstein monster so i have to just kind of i have work to do i have work and, to do, and, and then we'll get a version two which is solid and, and so everybody knows adam adam is making a documentary film it's a it's a documentary that's uh focused on a uh the oregon uh research trip that we made in uh, June of last year, uh, with, with Tom and his brother, Dave. And, uh, we just went out we spent a week, uh, in the, uh, forest down there in Lane County, Oregon, uh, Willamette forest. And, uh, uh, and just found just tons of evidence. I mean, you know, it makes me think back, was, you, you talking about that in years past, I really wish they would have had stuff filmed a lot over the years because, you know, I've been out and done so many things you know where we found Mm -hmm. you know some really incredible stuff and and just these these crazy trips milo was milo was on one of them more than one of those crazy trips (laughs) oh yeah right go back in time and give you guys like just even just a cell phone to document what's going on you know it just even if it's shaky or out of focus who cares it's like this is what happened we were there that's it that's what we were looking at (laughs) would have been great well, even to know that we could have had a, like a VHS camera back there. I mean, that thing would have been bigger than my backpack. Oh, oh yeah. I used to have one back in the '90s. That thing was huge, but it was it was cool to take out. In fact, um, th- there yeah. was a guy on Facebook wow. who who got a piece of some footage that I actually took, and, and it wasn't anything on the footage. It was just um, you know footage of the area. A buddy fight took me up and was showing me around. You know where he thought things were going on and, and close to where he had a sighting and you know so i just kind of was up playing with the camera filming and that's all that's on the video but uh mm-hmm. you know would've, it would have been nice to have had something like that to carry around and you know i don't know what we would have done when we were teenagers milo i mean might have blown the camera up or burned it or something <laughs> yeah or film stuff with you know yeah never mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prob- right. probably very, would have been a very different movie yeah, probably very inappropriate <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes back to that restraining order <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we're good well, I'm still seeing visions of y'all dropping the what was it the uh, oh my god in the fire and oh. trying to blow you Blow yourselves oh, up and then the, sliding down all the, the, black the volcanic rock on your bleach. Your mothers must have loved y'all. Oh my god! You know, well, mine didn't say much. <laughs> <laughs> well, she probably knew mine you. <laughs> I don't. Did your, did your dad That's say anything? Boy. Did your dad say anything, oh my Milo, god. after that trip? Yes, all the time. Like... I know Scott didn't. Get, <laughs> Scott didn't get in trouble. He thought he was going to be in toast. You know, for the. The windshield of the van being broke. Yeah, but he had a cooler parents though. He did, yeah. yeah we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, I got a choice of left or right boot. That's all I know. Oh, that was that was on my eighteenth birthday. We, yeah. we were gonna go see a movie on my eighteenth birthday, right? Me and Milo and, and a couple of our other other friends. And we we just stopped and grabbed a bucket of KFC chicken, chicken. right? And we were heading up uh, five twelve was the freeway you know, in yeah. Puyallup. And there was a bunch of slow traffic, so Milo went to pass going up this hill, right? <laughs> and the state trooper pulls us over, and they were just real buttheads about it. I mean, they slammed Milo. And he was very respectful. They slammed him on the hood of the car, and they came around questioning us, like, you know, asking if we had anything. And I, you know, held the bucket of chicken up. I said, you got chicken? You want some? <laughs> 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 I did. I said that. 
you know, we were kind of ticked about it. It's like we weren't really doing anything. So Milo gets a speeding ticket. And uh, we come back to school. It, was, it wasn't It was the next day, was it, Milo? It was after after he got no, the ticket, right? It was, yeah, it was like two days after or something like that. I totally forgot all about everything. You know, I was like, yeah, no big deal. We'll, we'll take care of it, pay it, and <laughs> go. But, man... My dad came to the school, hunting me down. He gave him <laughs> for a traffic he, ticket. He had steel-toed boots, and he gave Milo the choice of left or right to be kicked with. And then he kicked him, and then he put the boot wow. in the middle of his bedroom floor for like two weeks as a reminder. Yeah, wow. like, yeah that was messed that was up. Wicked. I, I just want to know when you guys were uh, sliding down the the. Uh, the volcanic pumice? rock on the pumice. Did y'all, yeah. did y'all the tear pumice. your pants and stuff on the way down, or what? Did we what? Oh yeah, it ripped up. Oh yeah, we we did it for like an hour, and then we started getting kind of chilly. And we're like, what's going on? And we realized that the butts had been eaten out of our pants. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. <laughs> Yeah. So we, that's, keep, we keep coming back to butts in this show. So that's yeah. so that's why we we headed back to the van. Hey. And what was it like? It was like a fifteen minute walk back, wasn't it, Milo? Yeah. So we went back to the, to the van, van, and we couldn't get in the van because Scott lost the keys. Yeah. Not just the keys, but but the wallet, his wallet with all of our money in it. We don't we pulled all of our money in there. So we went back up there to the spot where we were sliding, and and that's where we we started looking around, and that's when we found those footprints that went up that ridge, and there were hundreds of tracks you could see them in the moonlight going up that ridge, and uh, and I think Scott took a couple of pictures so we found the keys in the wallet they were right there next to where we were sliding and those things if they had if they just fallen <laughs> if they just fallen out of scott's pocket they would have been buried in that pumice i mean shoot we were up to our knees in it most of the time yeah it was you really probably, hard to come back up we, <laughs> you, you know, were probably you providing entertainment for the bigfoot up there yeah probably well, he was probably laughing his butt off oh yeah it was crazy i mean <laughs> You, you, you six, six, eight. What well, we were like eighteen then, Milo. Oh, oh at least six, eighteen you year olds. Eleventh grade, yeah, eighteen. We were eighteen. Bunch of goof, <laughs> six goofballs up there, you know. Skinny too. I was the skinniest of everybody. And well, it's fascinating big, big. that you guys are talking about this, and and the fact that you found the wallet and everything right where you started, because I uh, I heard an account, and this happened down in. Uh, Hanobi that there was a guy up there on a four-wheeler and he had some old family photos that somebody had given to him and he had them in his coat pocket well he got he was on a four-wheeler and he lost a bunch of those pictures and um, he thought well he didn't he didn't realize it until later on but um he went back up there with the four wheeler looking for the pictures, thinking that he could find the pictures. Well, the trail that they went that he went up, right in the middle of the trail was a pile of rocks. And um he thought, Well, that's kinda weird. I didn't notice this before. And he stopped and started taking the rocks apart and on the ground, uh protected by the rocks was the photographs that he lost. Wow. You know, it was weird with us, too. We, we just couldn't figure out. I mean, the wallet was laying in there, laying there, and the keys were on top of the wallet. So it wasn't it wasn't like it would just fell out of his pocket. I mean, to us, all of us, I think. And he didn't even remember taking them out, did he? No. I, no, he didn't take anything out of his what, pocket. That, it was, see, that's the... It was weird. Yeah. I think Bigfoot knew that if he didn't give you guys the wallet and the keys, that he would have to put up with you idiots. I was just going to say that. Yep. Days and days. They wanted to get. Yeah. They wanted to like get it. rid of us. Exactly. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like go get those keys. Put them out where they can find them. Oh man, get that little square thing too. Whatever the hell that I, is. You know, I have to wonder if they were. If it was. Well, I'm sure there was more than one. We just found the tracks of one, but when we. We were back in the van. We couldn't get a fire going because it was so windy up there. And we couldn't get a fire going. We weren't sure couldn't get the tent up or anything like that. So we figured, well, we'll just sleep in the van. And and yeah. two of the guys, 
and we were always pulling crap on each other. So two of the guys got out of the van, had to do their business out there, and of course we locked the door as soon as they got out. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're wanting back in and we're like nah you know screw you guys you're gonna stay out there and then this car comes up and you remember milo how far that was up there it was right across i thought it was a pickup truck that started it, doing it was yeah i don't i don't burning. know it was a car or, or pickup but there it yeah. was the park it was like a big parking lot it was on opposite side of the street from where the ranger station was at spirit lake and and yeah. that parking lot was big it was like five acres in size it was huge and we're on the opposite end of it. So this vehicle comes up there, and this is the middle of the night. And they have to go way the hell and gone up there to get there. I mean, there wasn't anybody close to that place. And they start burning their tires off, doing donuts. And this really thick black cloud of smoke starts coming right at the van. Our way. <laughs> and and they're out there pleading with us to let them, let them in the van. And we're like, ah, you're going to die. <laughs> And stuff like that. that was remember that was Brian that kept saying that you guys are gonna die, and and uh, Kirk Kirk had asthma, right? And Paul was just Paul, <laughs> so the the cloud oh, hit us God. and you couldn't see an inch out of the glass. It was that thick, and you hear Paul oh. out there coughing a lung up, and and, it, and the smoke passed you know after a, a bit, and Kirk standing there just fine, and Paul's you know in total misery coughing. We opened the door up, and you know, Kirk Kirk probably called us bastard or something like that. And we're like, now, wait a minute. you got asthma. How come you're not coughing and he is? And he says, well, I held my breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Wow. It was, it was kind amazing. of, Milo, you remember it was kind of the very same thing when Paul poured the black powder on the, on the hot coals and almost blew you guys right. up, and, yeah. and you weren't coughing, but... There he was again, coughing along up, didn't learn his lesson the first time. Well, he's the one who did it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and t- people need to understand this. I I didn't know anything about black powder or any of this. I didn't know what he We put didn't on know there. he had it. Remember, because he dropped yeah. everything on the, on the hillside when we were just about up at Windy Pass. And the only thing he had in his oh, pack. Oh, yeah, that's a whole different story. I know. The only thing he had in his pack was sh- plastic ship models, baseball cards, and long underwear. That's That was it for the whole trip. And we didn't know that in his pocket, he had a couple of pounds of black powder. So, yeah. so the last day up there, it started snowing, and we, we wanted to get the fire going. We had a pretty good hot bed of, or a bed of hot coals, so we wanted to get the fire going so we could kind of dry out while we were packing up. And we needed to get out of there quick because it was snowing really hard. So... The rest of us, four of us, went out to get wood. Milo was blowing on the coals, trying to get the fire going. Paul was standing above him. We come walking back in. Behind me now. Behind yeah, behind him. him. So we come walking in, all the other four of us, with wood in our arms. And we see this, what's going on. We see, we can, you know, it was just, it was just obvious. Paul was pouring black powder on the coals above Milo's head. And we just kind of looked at each other with the, the same look of like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know? And then this, it was just kawoosh. <laughs> this giant cloud of ash goes up. And then you hear Paul in there going, oh. oh, oh, oh. And then when the ash cleared, we're, we're standing there wondering if these guys are alive even <laughs> after this. <laughs> and and uh, I was, my face was down in that crap. It, it was. You were right down in it. And Milo oh. had a little goatee and it singed all the hair off his, you know, the front of his head and his eyebrows and the goatee. My, my. <laughs> Dark hair, my black hair, everything was just covered in ash. I looked like a cartoon when, where it was just spiked. It when we re- from when we realized you guys are okay, we rolled on the ground laughing. It was so funny, <laughs> like a Darwin Awards thing. Oh my god, it was oh to say the least. <laughs> that Man. I swear, I chased that. That whole trip. bonehead all around camp after that. That, that, whole, that whole trip was like that. It was, I mean, it was cool because we found the Bigfoot tracks the first day, but I mean, the whole trip was insane. <laughs> but who who invited Paul in the first place? I'm curious. There's got to be Bill. a guilty. No, party he was he was part of the group. Bill. Bill. He was just in the group. Okay. Yeah, Bill did it. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill. Bill's like, we got to bring Paul. Oh, oh yeah. Well, he was hey, he uh, was Milo's entertainment. Well, yeah. here you go. No, here's the way I think it is. 
Bill or Paul and I was watch. Bill's entertainment, so Bill would invite Paul for all all the boring moments. <laughs> wow, that way that see Bill's genius when it comes to that because the way I would look at it, it was like, hmm, it's going to be stupid out here sometimes, so we're going to have Paul out here so Milo can have something to just chew on. Yeah, okay, I got it. You know, I, I think I think Scott was kind of devious. And it took it took forty years to figure that out. I, I think Scott was devious too. You remember what he did yeah, that first all, night? Yeah, yeah, he chopped the the wood seat off. This this friend of ours, Brian. Brian was kind of a he was kind of a butthead to some of the other guys once in a while. Smart Ellie. Yeah, he was more smart. Ellie. So we we fixed our dinner, and I went over and sat down on this rock in front of the fire. And, and all the rest of you guys are getting your food. So here comes Brian over, or Scott. Scott come over. And yeah. and those college students, they had cut some limbs and tied them with twine between trees, kind of like a makeshift bench or whatever to sit on. So Scott sits down. He looks down. He looks at me, and he gets up, and he walks off. And I thought, oh, he must have forgot, a, forgot something, right? Yeah. So here comes Brian over. He sits in the very same place. And he starts eating his food. And a moment later, here comes Scott behind him with a hatchet. Now, Scott was <laughs> never, never somebody that would do anything obnoxious, ever. And you see the hatchet uh, go up in the air and go thwack. And it cut one of the pieces of twine and tied this thing up. <laughs> and so Brian went back. Brian went backwards. His feet went up. The plate went <laughs> flying in the air. And then Scott's standing there with this big grin on his face. And Milo goes, Scott, you're one of us now. <laughs> because <laughs> we were always doing oh, stuff to man. each other <laughs> oh, man. that's that's bigfoot hunting as, as its finest when you're teenagers yeah. there you when go. we could move well remember we were up the hill and we were chucking them 10 ton boulders down on each other yeah milo and i got up on this this slope ahead of the other guys and we thought oh We'll fix these guys. We start rolling boulders down. <laughs> wow. And they were big. They were like, you know, two and three feet high on the edge of this. Oh, this my gosh. This kind of, ah, screw these guys. Let's see, how, let's see if they can move quick. <laughs> I think that was our thinking, wasn't it? Let's see how fast yeah, they can pretty move. Much. <laughs> Stand yeah, by me. He's got the... nothing on you guys. I, I sent. Yeah. You, you guys were the oh, bestest man. of friends. I can tell. <laughs> I, I sent yeah. I sent Oh, Johnny. we loved each other, man. We we're so close. We still hang out with each oh. other, except for two of after them. after fifty. Except for the ones yeah. we kill with the boulders. <laughs> there was I sent pictures those pictures to John Green and Scott still remembers to the comment. The comment was, you know, well, well were these pictures taken with a flash? Well, yeah, it was like ten o'clock at night. Of course, it was a flash. You know? <laughs> but that was the only <laughs> that's the only thing he asked about him. I feel like from what you said, Will, that John Green was a little bit lost in the topic. You know, he like he would. Yeah, he never he would collect it, but he wouldn't make sense of it. No, not Does a whole lot. Sense? I mean, you know, he has he has a persona, you know, that survived him, mm -hmm. and and rightly yeah. so. I mean, you know, he did write some good books, um, but watching him firsthand in the field, I, I got to say, I wasn't real impressed. We well, collected all that data. I think he was more the data guy he, than he was. He was the a journalist. Field researcher. Yeah, he was a journalist. So I mean, you know, that was really his input to the topic. So he was just looking for the splash. He wasn't looking for. Mm. He, he, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't really trying to get answers. I don't think. I mean, gotcha. he he probably said he did. In fact, I I probably sure I've heard him say it, but. Uh, not so much in those words. It would be like, you know, when we'd talk, it'd be like, well, you know, we we wonder if A, B, and C equals D and that kind of thing. But it was more yeah. speculation than actively trying to work on a, on a particular part of this that was a problem issue. Gotcha. I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I remember when Green came out to the uh, Clark Ranch to hear the screaming. And then he kind of like packed up and left. Yeah, we and headed back to Canada. Had, it was like good grief. It was like what a day's drive yeah. to to listen for half an oh, hour, turn around and go. It wasn't even there half an hour. You know, we went there and, uh, geez, that that was after you know the night we were out there, Milo, and got terrorized that night. Yeah. And uh, I wrote Green, 
and it was you know a couple weeks later because the mail isn't all that speedy and he called my parents house and and you know i answered the phone and he says i'm in seattle i'll be there in a little while can you guys take me out to the clark ranch i said sure so i called i called paul and i called scott i said because scott lived close to me i said scott do you want to go out with us john green's coming down and scott's like oh yeah sure you know john green you know he mr mr Smart, that was his attitude like oh yeah sure you know john green so he come over, uh-huh. he come over to my house and then here comes green pulling in with these videos. <laughs> even to this day scott will still say you really knew john green <laughs> well yeah so we we went out there and and he picked paul up on the way because he lived on the way to the clark place and uh we'd just gotten out of the van it was it was just after dusk and enough there was enough light i guess residual light in the sky where you could see outlines of us you know people standing there but that was about it Mm -hmm. and no sooner than we got out of the van of course the clark family they come out to greet us and these screams started up and these long loud over and over and over and over and over again and after it couldn't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes green says oh i need to get back to british columbia so we loaded up in the van he dropped everybody off and and left and then years later uh i don't know how many years god probably 15 probably 15 years later or so i was at his house and uh it was about in fact it was about the time harry and the hendersons came out because we were all joking about renee being the frenchman in the film and green he says he says, God, you know, I, I really have been kicking myself all these years for not taking a recorder to the Clark Ranch. And I didn't say anything. Oh. I just thought, well, duh. <laughs> you know, what's, <laughs> yeah, you know you what's the point of coming <laughs> down there? I wrote him in detail about what happened and all the screaming and all this stuff. Because, Milo, you remember all that screaming that went on. Man, I saw the little. Yeah, my, yeah uh, Milo's the one, the one, only one of us that saw the creature. Or one of the creatures. Because there was a group of Paul them. got felt up by it. Well, yeah. They, he was, reached under the tent. And felt, Milo was the witness. Back. He was the gropey. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Paul needed to file the restraining order. Yeah. Yeah. I, another oh, butt man. story. <laughs> another <laughs> butt story. <laughs> That's it. That's kind of the theme of this conversation, you know, where exactly isn't it? Was the Clark Ranch, you know? What's that for us? I said, where exactly is the Clark Ranch? It's uh, it's outside of the town of Roy. Roy Washington. Yeah, Roy, Do Roy you guys Washington. want pictures of it? I, I can. Uh-huh. Yeah, Roy. What what do you got pictures of? Hmm. I I can go and take pictures of what it oh, looks yeah. like now. I yeah. Guess. You know, I tried finding. My car will be fixed in about a week. I tried <laughs> finding the Clark Ranch on Google Earth, and and that area's really been built up. So oh, yeah. I, I would actually have to be there and probably like we did walk the tracks to figure out yeah. where it is. But maybe we'll do that next time I come up. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, take a, take Because it wasn't that long a walk down the railroad tracks. No. Well, this is totally a, in a whole other direction. Right? Yeah. It's like my... You have to film it if you go. Oh, yeah. I want that footage. Well, it's like, like Milo <laughs> and I went. We went to where... Uh, you know, me and Mark and John Adams, you know, saw the footprints in 1972. And that area doesn't look yeah. that much different now than it did way back then. It's pretty similar to what it was. I mean, nothing's cool. nothing's happened out there in all those years. Wow. <laughs> they quit using the railroad tracks a long time ago, and, and they're just there. Yeah, that was my question was, was you know, was, was it even a live railroad line it, back in the it, day when you guys found the track it was periodically they'd run um okay. they'd run cars with logs it was a switch track i think yeah <clears throat> yeah they'd run they'd run oh. uh, trains with logs on them periodically but not real often maybe once a week or something like that tops gotcha wow and then and then you just quit using it after a while <clears throat> i'm so glad we have that photo from the tracks that uh, John Adams found it. I'm so glad we have that. Yeah, I um, I I had pictures. I had gone up there for a visit one year, or no, I didn't go for a visit. I actually lived in when I lived in Puyallup. Milo, will you bring it, please? <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> mm. 
We uh, <clears throat> do we lose somebody? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Well, when we um, when I lived in Puyallup before I moved here, uh, I drove out when there was a little bit of snow on the ground, so I could have pictures of that area like it was back in '72. But I've lost the pictures since then, so I'll have to try to do that again sometime. It was in that basement flood. No, no, that was in well, my old computer. I didn't, uh, I apparently didn't transfer everything out of that one before I tossed it out. It was, it was dying and I thought I got everything, but apparently I didn't. So, oh, bummer. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not the best at tech stuff. So, unfortunately, (laughs) that that kind of stuff happens to me once in a while. Oh, man. Double redundancy. Got to have lots and lots of backups. Oh, I do now. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. Well, and you send me stuff. I got backups too. I got got you covered on everything you sent me. That's good. That way I'll know somebody. That's all back. Somebody will have it when my computer blows up. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Gail Beatty, all her good stuff, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to... We'll... Sounds like somebody needs to do a documentary, Will, on y'all, uh, you and your friend's escapades up there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a whole movie all by itself. It'd be great. It'd just be great. Milo, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> all right. I got a butt joke. Oh, no. Oh, there you go. No, it's God. about time. <laughs> I can see it all now. These kids sliding down the pumice hill and the the Bigfoot lined up across the ridge watching y'all. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) away by the night sky. (laughs) I I don't know where we got the idea to do that. I mean, we we had never been around pumice before, so we figured out it was slippery and thought, hey, this might be fun. We were kind of bored. We didn't have anything to do. I mean. I think... We were using cardboard and it just ruined it. And we said, "Hey, look on my butt." We don't need. We, then, yeah, we don't need cardboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 we were considering what it was going to do to your jeans. <laughs> Never gave it a thought. <laughs> yeah, I don't. None of us did. That was like cool. I was like, "Hey, why are Literally. my jeans all shredded?" Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys must have some some area of interest you want to talk about other than our craziness back in those days. <laughs> oh man. Craziness. Man, that was my <laughs> highlight. <laughs> craziness. <laughs> no, but well I was looking back in some uh like, well, now that I can read small print, I've been really going back into reading, like, uh, news articles of missing campers and stuff in the local areas, like uh, an Olympic National Forest, and, you know, where it's unexplained, where they blame it on a bear attack. I mean, you know, so it was like uh, um, the sheriff's report said that they found the body 200 meters or 200 yards up a hill away from the the trailhead and this was what was that 2000 and some anyway it was on new year's eve and and they never found the guy but they said it was a bear well, what bear would drag it well now if they to, if they didn't find him how they know he was up that far up the slope just by, by the drag marks? Or... Him, there, no one could find anything, but they blame it on a bear. Because it made me think, no, I mean, disappeared. yeah, I've, I've heard a couple of other situations where, you know, somebody disappeared at a trailhead and they would find them, you know, some distance up a slope. And, and yeah. these are kind of consistent, these different stories. And I'm thinking, well, a bear's not going to do that because they, if they're going to kill somebody, they they eat them and then you know bury the rest in a shallow grave same with a big cat huh well you know i mean it's like maul right i mean they they're just maul person right i i don't think they would 
I don't know. It, would they look at it as food? Oh yeah. If a if I'm, a black bear and, and, attacks you, they're getting, they're doing it for food. Okay. Well, you know, I'm just saying, why would they drag them 200 feet up a hill and just leave them there? Yeah, a bear wouldn't do well, that. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do that. Yeah. Because believe it or not, a bear will take, they'll feed on you immediately. They'll feed on a kill immediately. Okay. Then they'll take that and then bury it in a shallow grave. Now, here's what's interesting about bears. They actually like um, it, the butt, the the, the meat butt? decomposes a little bit. Ah, yeah, she, like said butt. Butt. she said butt. She said All right, guys. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to be serious here, man. Come on, man. Rump roast. <laughs> uh, they actually like the, the meat to decompose, and for uh, one, it softens it. And secondly, uh, with those maggots in there, they actually like to farm the maggots. They really enjoy eating maggots. I know that's gross, but that's that's uh, really a thing that they have so um <clears throat> they will um you know they'll do that and they have accounts believe it or not of people that have survived bear attacks mm-hmm. that have actually had the bear start feeding on them and they said once the bear breaks through the nerves you can't even feel it and they have actually been buried and then they crawled out in fact there's a a, a fairly famous incident where um, this gentleman, he was a, a banker in uh, Anchorage there, and he he survived it, and he actually crawled out of his own grave that the bear had put him in and managed to get himself back. But uh, he had been mauled very badly. Yeah. Those guys are tough in Alaska, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. So those well, I lived up there for 17 years, but I, I don't know about how tough I was. <laughs> well, okay. never had that happen to me. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't kill you, I mean, that's that's got to be in your mind. You got to get out of that situation because the bear is going to come back. Oh, yeah, it'll come back and finish the job. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But your leftovers, you're, you're in his fridge, right? I mean, that's what that's. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Essentially, yeah, yeah. Come back and eat you later. <laughs> yeah, you're my wow. snack. <laughs> wow. So now you know what it feels like to be in one of those Tupperware containers. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Because <laughs> I run fast. I, I'm going to find a. Hey, if you have, if, I'm looking for the, now. Here's the new the new catch thing for me to look at. Who has the weakest glutes and butt tucks? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you, my think God you, you think they're sizing you up based on that, Milo? Hell, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be by the guy who's the skinny runt little guy with no butt. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, you're going to have to post this one on Pornhub when it's done. I don't think that YouTube's going to allow it. I'll call this butt talk. Well, it's, it's not it's not any bad words, so I think we're okay. Um, That's, yeah, so far, yeah. Well, you never Pretty know. Funny. Oh God! I was thinking of something. Chuck, you're awful quiet out there. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm just listening. <laughs> He's probably shaking his head, thinking, wanna... "Oh my God, what I get into." <laughs> I, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to wake up my girlfriend over there at Forest Place. Ashley, you already oh. have. She heard Uh-oh. you earlier. She, she's headbutting me now, but she hadn't said anything. Yeah. Oh my god! She, 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 she keeps staring at the phone, like, "Oh my god, he's going to say something to me anytime now. He's going to say something to me anytime now." <laughs> well, it's like before you know, we had both Brian and Tom had cats and. And they would occasionally, you know, make noise or do something where the microphone could pick it up. But you know, people got a kick out of that. <laughs> well, I'm su- I'm surprised y'all didn't hear her on that show. That every once in a while, she was when Chuck would start talking, she uh, she was started meowing, and I was like, hush, hush, listen, hush, hush. He's <laughs> like, oh no, that's my that's my boyfriend. That's my man. I gotta talk to him. <laughs> 
<laughs> she got a crush on it. Sure, it sure, sure does feel nice every now and then when you have somebody that loves you like like she does me. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Milo, when you Aww. get your when you get your car out of the shop, I, I'm gonna have you if you would go over and because um, I know Ravensdale's pretty close to you. Yeah, it's and just on the street. Check out that screaming because we got an area where there's screaming going on right now. We were talking about screaming before. Yeah, and we had we mm-hmm. had the guy on the show. I don't remember exactly when or which show it was off the top of my head, but he was on not too long ago. You know and. Uh, and after we had him on the show, he texted me and said that the screams had come up, started up again. So I need to uh, <clears throat> need to message him and see if that's still going on or if they've moved on. Well, if they're still going on, have him uh, get out there with his phone, try to record it, or get it out there with an audio recorder. I mean, just something. Now, this is a Raven still or yeah. outside of it, or what? Just it's just outside. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. Actually, it's within a couple of miles of where you remember when charlie i told you about charlie found that bear yeah and uh, the one where the oh, right there it was right there yeah just a couple of miles from the spot where the screaming's going on oh wow so i found that kind of an interesting i don't know if it's a connection because that was back in 1980 and of course this is now but you know it's still interesting that there's there's a pattern of things going on in that area and there has been for many years the bear skeleton yeah. where the snout was punched in? Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Well, what do you think, why, do, why do you think they do that screaming? It, it's, I don't know. I mean, it could be could be warnings. It could be, I, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, I, I would ask the question, why do apes do it? Well, you know, like when you get help. Well, like, was there something going on beforehand? I mean, was I mean? No. Well, when it happened, they were. I think they were having Thanksgiving dinner, and they went to let the dog out, and that's when his mother noticed this. All this screaming was going mm-hmm. on. She says, "Hey, everybody, come and listen to this." So he recorded it, a portion of it, and then he said, after everybody went back in and he stopped recording, it went on for a long time after that. So it wasn't just something that just started and stopped it was had been going on and then it continued to go on yeah i was thinking that's where the monkeys. train amtrak and everybody goes nor- north Burlington yeah, northern goes through there it's yeah it's not near that i, I looked at it in google earth there's okay. the only thing there is uh like a pot there's a power line cut out there okay and it came he said it came from out that direction I mean, primates, I mean, all primates will scream at some point in time, but they don't just sit and, and I've never, I've never seen or heard any of them that just sit and scream and scream and scream and scream. Well, that's what made me think of howler monkeys because they'll do well, that. Yeah, they, they, they do it, but it's usually, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I've listened to howler monkeys and I, uh, I, I think it's, uh, for different reasons. I don't know that much about howler monkeys. I'll be honest with you, but uh, I think they they don't do it uh, in an angry sort of fashion. But uh, um, I mean, I, I've never just heard them go on for hours, you know, doing that. And you, you hear that about Bigfoot, but sometimes they just go on for long, long times doing that. Yeah, I mean, in this case, it wasn't hours, but you know, there was a, definitely a few <laughs> minutes of it going on, which is when you're listening to it, it's an eternity. But it might only be several minutes. Yeah. I've got something to say, but I don't think it'd be appropriate. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good. Hey, but you know. I will say it's a butt it leans towards the butt. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Let's don't go there. <laughs> oh hey, Will? Yeah. Did you uh did you hear the listen to the audio that I sent you? Oh, I haven't yet. I the, have got all the this video. Stuff. I got to look at it. I had it not yet. Check. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I just wanted to see what your take on it was. <clears throat> was What's it screaming? It? Do what? <clears throat> what's was on the screaming? What's on the video? <laughs> well, there's a there's somebody filming. I don't know who's filming it, but there's somebody filming, and he's on a cabin out on a deck and 
all you see in front of the film is massive amounts of forest area. I don't even know where it took where it took place. I I saw it on um, somebody posted it. That's and, the one uh, you sent me, wasn't it? Yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm listening to it right now. Um, geez, I almost want to say. That's it? Can you hear it, Milo? Yeah. Let me My turn it up. God. Let me turn it up. I'll, I'll play We'll put it on the recording here. Okay. I'm not sure what that noise is. God. Okay. Man. You guys heard a little bit of that, huh? Okay, that oh, yeah. put goosebumps in. Man, I'm glad I got a giant but. It's like, you know, what, what we got recorded in Ravensdale, and I've got recordings from other locations also that aren't really that different than that. They're, they're a little different, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't, it'd be interesting to find out where that is. Uh, I Where'd think, you get the, where did you see the posting at? It was, um, I think there's a guy, I think his name is, um, Starts with a C, Car- Cardos, or he's pretty well known in the Bigfoot community. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he posted it on YouTube. I think it was on YouTube. It might have been on his page. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and you look. Said it, you said it was a short. Was it a, one of those short stories on YouTube? Yeah, it was. It was a short. So he got it from. He must have got it from somebody else, or saw it or something but he posted Hold on, it. I'm, looking it I'm looking it up now Chuck Let me see if I can Cardos Car- uh, I want to say Cardos but I, I well, think the, I'm wrong on that on on YouTube it's um, it's on Squatch Watchers site so I'm sure I'm sure there's a source for it other than than it being on here right wow that was that was is impressive. Yeah, what, I Squatch Watchers. That's what it was. It was what? Squatch Watchers. Yeah. Squatch That's Watchers. Okay. <clears throat> you know, there's probably a lot more audio out there that people have that they just haven't brought forward. Oh, there's I think so too, and I think there's film out there too that people have that they, they won't never show to anybody. Well, you remember the two ladies we had on a while back here that had their sighting up by Mount Rainier? Um, they got a video of the creature they saw that day, and they're not showing it to anyone. I haven't even seen it. And, wow. and I'm the only person that's interviewed them about their encounter. So um, I wonder I wonder why people are like that. I mean, is it are, are they afraid of getting some kind of... Uh, crap about what they filmed or what well well in their case um they were told that and and i think by an attorney or somebody said hey you probably should hang on to that and you know be careful who you show it to because you know people will latch onto it and use it for their own benefit um and admittedly they told me privately that it's not really that good of film footage uh but you know you can see what it is in the film and um what i found and i've got some pictures uh, you know that have been sent to me and it's always the ones that are the most credible are the ones who won't talk about it they won't show it publicly that seems to be the pattern well you know i, I mean i can understand like if it's like a, a casino because just up the road from me mm-hmm. uh at, at one of the uh, casinos i mean they they've got good footage of one walking across the parking lot and going over into the grease trap and, and lifting up the grease trap and digging food out of it. 
and I've heard from people that have seen the film um, that it's excellent footage. I mean, it's crisp. And he actually walked underneath a, um, a floodlight that was back there, and the floodlight was 10 feet uh, where the light was, and he barely walked underneath the the light. And he was he was big, he was massive. And uh, according to other sources, I've I've been told is that the elders of the tribe decided to uh, get rid of the film. But uh, there's there's people out there that say that no, they didn't they didn't get rid of it. It's still out there. But I can understand that if you're worried about people coming to your casino. Yeah, I guess it's an individual thing. I'm not really sure why it seems to be that way. Like, I have a really good picture. I think I showed you guys, um, you know, the juvenile in Arizona sitting with its feet in the tub of water. And and that's a pretty good, pretty good clear picture. But the rancher won't. He won't allow it to be used anywhere. And it's not that he wants to use it himself or anything. He just doesn't want, and maybe it's he just doesn't want the attention. I have another. It's an excellent, excellent photo, and I mean, yeah. but I, my, I mean, the, I guess if it ever got out where it was located, then he's probably got a bunch of people tromping across his property oh, looking exactly. for, you know, Bigfoot. So, and, it, and, and I there's... can see where the casinos wouldn't want it because you know you'd yeah. have people. They want people to come to the casino. They want people coming and parking on their parking lots just to look at the Bigfoot. And some people just kind of freak out about it, like the the Michigan picture that I have was taken in 2009. Um, the person who sent it to me was a, fa- a family friend of the people who took the picture. You know, it's, it's a clear, broad daylight picture, one of these things running away from the person who took the picture. You know, they, uh, they refuse to admit what's on the picture. They refuse to talk about it. They wanted nothing absolutely to do with it. So she contacted me and gave me the picture. And I, I have no backstory on it because the people simply won't talk about it. So maybe it's religious beliefs or whatever on their part, why they won't. I, who knows? They wouldn't. They didn't even tell her why they wouldn't talk about it. Hmm. Well, I know that... <laughs> I'd I'd heard a rumor, I don't know for a fact, but I had heard that after this video at the casino was was people found out about it. Um there was people out there with guns and accidentally shot a buffalo while they were out there and Oh, I'm not surprised. Right? I'm not surprised. It, it got into a pretty big stink out there. I mean, so can you blame them? Time. Yeah, can you blame them for yeah. not wanting to show it? I mean it and you guys are all right. I mean it brings it would bring a bunch of idiots <laughs> doing things like that yeah whether it's shooting or whether it's just tramping around the property uh, we had the same experience in Yakult when i was there the family didn't want people running all over their property so anybody that went there had to go through me and the one time i allowed somebody outside to go there that phd from the oregon regional primate research center um, he caused the family a bunch of problems just his presence and the things he did there. So just even one person was enough to warrant not allowing anybody outside to go, you know, on someone's private property. Well, you know, in the, the Falk monster uh, incident, you know, back in the seventies and uh, around 70, 71, um, you know, one of the local, uh, first of all, the, the reports started showing up in the newspaper. And so locally it was, it was, um, uh, it was known that, you know, one of these swamp devils was causing problems down there. And then uh, a radio uh, DJ said, uh, I'll put a $10,000 bounty on anybody that brings this thing in dead or alive. And so um, (laughs) Falk, Arkansas just got bombed with all these rednecks showing up with their shotguns and everything. And the sheriff down there, had to go in and and manage and control the thing, and because he was afraid of exactly the same thing that somebody was going to shoot somebody else, thinking I'm bringing in you know the Falk monster, and here it is, I shot Bubba, you know. So you there's know. another element to that too. I I'd, I'd known I don't know if 
Doug is still around, a gentleman named Doug Tarrant. He did a lot of bit parts in Western movies, and he was a deputy mm. sheriff, and he actually played music with Bill Haley and the Comets way back when. Mm. So he was you know, a multi-talented guy, but he was friends with Charles Pierce and mm. was actually there when they were filming The Legend of Boggy Creek. He, he wanted to go there and help out for a while. And one day he told me, he said, one day they were going to load up all the gear in a, in a canoe and go up to another part of the creek to do filming. So they had all the gear in waterproof wrapping, the cameras and everything. And the creature appeared on the other side of the creek from him and screamed at him. <laughs> so, you know, Doug, Doug let it be known that he was going to, he was going to go track down and shoot the Falk monster. And and I think it was only a day later that the governor of Arkansas, he said, rolled in with his entourage and issued a, a verbal cease and desist order to him and told him that we've known about this thing for I think he said sixty eight years. It's kind of our it's kind of our unspoken mascot. Leave it alone. Wow. And he loaded up and they left. And I'm thinking, Wow. Can you imagine? Now how did he find out number one? And secondly, the, right. gov- the governor of Arkansas himself comes rolling in to give you a cease and desist order from going out and shooting a Sasquatch. It wasn't Clinton, was it? No, no. <laughs> no, no, this, no, no. This, just, when, just, when was that made? That was that was in the late 60s? 72. Or 72. 72. 72, yeah. So you'd have to look up and see yeah. who the governor of Arkansas was at that time. But, yeah. um, I'm just curious, you know, we're... Talking about butts and stuff. <laughs> okay, Milo, we can leave butts alone now. <laughs> so, so you, you you do know that that Oklahoma put a bounty on a Bigfoot, didn't you? One of the state no. legislatures. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Yeah, but yeah, then they, they were uh, yeah. Well, they said at first they said that uh, it was a two million dollar dollar bounty for a Bigfoot uh, dead. And then um, uh, more of the state legislatures got involved and they they changed it to uh, we don't want you to kill one but you can capture it and you'll get the $2 million bounty. And then now, now I think it's up to like $3 million to wow. get one captured. But, well, there um, you go, Will. Right there. There you go. But Money I, on the you table, know, Chuck. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want no part of that. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know <laughs> if that's even been rescinded or uh, last I heard, that's what it, the bounty was up to three million for one that's captured. But, uh, I, you know, if you guys know as much as I do about this stuff, I don't, I don't think you could ever actually capture one. No, yeah, I don't think so. It wouldn't happen. Highly unlikely. Well, guys, we're running short on time. Any any final thoughts or anything before we wrap this piece up? The butt end of the story. <laughs> oh. I knew he wasn't going to leave it alone. No. Nope, nope. <laughs> He'll oh be talking God. about it for days. Yep. I have created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, better be careful next week. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks for stopping in and hanging out with us. Um, we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there. <laughs>